Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation takes us to Imo State, where there seems to be a little bit of controversy after the Imo, uh, six Imo lawmakers have removed their speaker. Um, and, uh, his name, um, Mr. Imiziem, yeah, that's his name. Um, and of course, uh, this is also coming um, just a few weeks after the same uh, speaker had um, remove the deputy speaker uh, for unparliamentary activities. Um, and we're speaking this morning, yes, the speaker's name is Paul Emeziem, I beg your pardon. We're speaking this morning with uh, Festus Ogu, a constitutional lawyer. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. All right. Um, it's not the first time that we're hearing of uh, situations like this, and not very long ago, I think also in Plateau State, there was something similar going on. Um, can you share with us, you know, what what your take is on, um, you know, bits of crisis that happens in Nigerian State House of Assemblies that you have six, sometimes seven, eight, ten lawmakers impeaching the speaker and, you know, replacing him with, you know, a new speaker the next day. Um, how, how does this always happen? Mr. Ogun, can you hear us? All right, we seem to have lost uh, Fester Ogun there. We will try to reconnect with him and, um, uh, of course, uh, bring him to share his thoughts on this. It's uh, Paul Emeziem, who, of course, is a speaker that has been removed. He has been replaced uh, by a new speaker, Kennedy Ibe. Our guest earlier, of course, uh, uh, Chris Wando had spoken a little, a little bit about it. Uh, but Kennedy Ibe currently is the Speaker of the Imo State House of Assembly. In reaction to it, Paul Emeziem has said that he is still the Speaker and that uh, the Deputy Speaker, Amara Nwayamu, who was removed and, of course, who led other lawmakers to impeach him and put in Kennedy Ibe as the new Speaker, um, cannot do that legally because his impeachment still stands. And so, you know, the, these are the legal, um, you know, uh, directions and, you know, controversies that they would have to continue to battle until there's some clarity as to what is going on in the Imo State House of Assembly. Um, Chris Wando also mentioned earlier that this is all just politics being played out here and there. Um, we hope that there is some clarity and we'll be able to understand better as we try to reconnect with First Sogun this morning. Um, I was saying earlier that it's not the first time that we're seeing things like this, and every now and then there is one state controversy or the other, you know, and um, you know it leads to impeachments. Sometimes it even leads to the mace being stolen or being taken away from the house, you know, so that the house sittings can hold. In reaction, Fred uh, Paul Emeziem also made statements saying that they weren't even meant to be having a parliamentary sitting on the day that you know his supposed impeachment took place. Um, and so it cannot stand. Um, they obviously would be going to the courts, I believe, you know, to try to make sense out of all of this. And of course, uh, um, I'm not sure where this leads. Mm. Well, it's just a similar uh, situation that happened in Plateau State just recently, uh, looking at the impeachment as well. Um, I'm sure that there's a procedure because with everything, you have laws and rules guiding every organization, every institution. And so I'm hoping that uh, we're able to connect with... Uh, um, Festus this morning so we find out exactly uh, what the law requires I mean what it takes if you were to impeach a speaker uh, you know what is the expectation of the law how is it supposed to uh, go right and so what are the procedures to be taken before a speaker has been impeached I'm sure that the constitution actually states that also um, that also is also a major concern because if you're not supposed to have plenary it was supposed to be a committee meeting and then yeah. why do you have that how many persons sat and decided that we have a country report saying that about 19 members signed that resolution out of the 27 members so find out you know the legality of all of this but it calls for a lot of concern because I mean these are lawmakers and we um, expect that they should understand the law. Uh, before you become a lawmaker, you should understand the law, understand what the law says, and that you are abiding by the law. Uh, it is really, really sad because over time we've actually seen some uh, radical behavior in state houses of assembly. And usually when that maze is taken, because that's the element of legality, without that, it doesn't, it means that your gathering is null and void. However, uh, you know, Paul Emeziem is also saying that he is still the speaker and that his removal is childish, null and void. Yeah. Um, you know, like you said, you know, we've seen this display a couple of times, more times than we're comfortable with. Um, 
can six lawmakers remove a speaker? Um, you know, who needs to step in here to ensure that there is peace or there is, you know, some, some, some sa sanity in the Emo State House of Assembly? Does the governor also need to step in here? And, of course, the allegations against the uh, deputy speaker, um, uh, yeah, Amara Iwayahu, you know, who was also removed in the, on the 8th of July, I believe, by Paul Emesiem, um, that's also going to come into, into the conversation here because they're going to have to wonder exactly what he is accused of. It says on parliamentary activity, and that's the reason he was taken out as deputy speaker uh, before then leading these six lawmakers and others to impeach uh, Paul Emesiem now. Um, we have uh, Festus Ogun. Welcome back, Mr. Ogun. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us clearly? Yes, I can. All right, welcome back. Go ahead if you heard my question earlier. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, so, good morning, Nigeria. Uh, when we look at the game of impeachment in Nigeria, you discover that to impeach is cheap. We've had cases, even right there in the most states, when the deputy governor was impeached. A uh, few years ago, uh, uh, during the time of um, um, governor, uh, governor of uh, the former governor of the uh, state, the deputy governor Madrid was recently impeached by the Imo state as of assembly. But then, when we look at it from from the aspect of law. You see that section 92, subsection 2C of the 1999 Constitution um, laid down the procedure with which a speaker or deputy speaker can be impeached. The law says that at least the third majority of the, of the members of the House must have voted and must have passed the resolution before the speaker or deputy speaker can be said to have impeached. The question is, is that the, is that the case in this uh, current scenario? We have about 19 lawmakers out of 27 uh, lawmakers that um, you know, voted for his impeachment. So, so from the aspect of law, at least from the face of it, I think it is, uh, it is valid. But we really need to ask, if indeed the only constitutional assignment the House of uh, Assembly understands in Nigeria is impeachment and suspension, the question is, are they really committed to their constitutional mandate to make law for the for the peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria? Are they really committed to making laws geared towards the progress and advancement of human states? These are real questions that concern the common man on the street. Whether they, they engage in you know, a deal of impeachment, on a daily basis. It may not necessarily matter to the common man. That is their policy. What is important to the common man is the dividend of democracy that can be resulted as a result of conscious and deliberate lawmaking. Lawmaking geared towards the development of the society. But is that what obtains the evil state? While I am not in total support of uh, you know, daily substitution of the leadership of the House, I think it is important for Nigeria not to be distracted by the, by the distractions that we see on a daily basis. Are they really taking time to address the existential questions affecting the good people of Vimo State? That is the question that bothers me, not the politicking. Mind you, whether we look at the sincerity or the genuineness, or, or whether 
the impeachment was malicious. It's a different story entirely. But from the face value of the law, to third majority uh, has been met, and uh, the impeachment appears at least uh, in consonance with the provisions of the Constitution. But when you now have, out of 30 lawmakers, we have positions there, we have seven lawmakers coming together to impeach. It will not stand because it is a gross violation of the Constitution. You mentioned that uh, what happened in Plato State. If we have less than two third majority of the members of the House coming together to impeach uh, a speaker or deputy speaker of the House, evidently we should call it a charade, which is the blue name. That cannot be called an impeachment. But in this case of people State, at least from the fact uh, in public disposal, I think it is constitutional. However, I do not want Nigerians to really dwell on, you know, distractions coming in form of uh, legislative politicking. I really want Nigerians to dwell on issues, issues of governance, issues of legislative capacity. Are they really delivering the expected goods? These are questions begging for answer. One, we do not have a situation where the impeached speaker uh, has been suspended from performing his other legislative duties. Then I do not have an issue. But where we have a situation where he is not just impeached, but he is also suspended, then there will be a serious challenge. Because the position of the law remains that a member of the House of Assembly or even a member of the National Assembly cannot be suspended. But to impeach or remove a speaker, a deputy speaker, or uh, someone who is holding a principal office in the House from his office, not his, not his seat, I think that, that, that is a constant to the Constitution. What should not be done? is to suspect or remove a lawmaker from representing the speaker. But once the impeached speaker can still uh, perform his legislative duty on behalf of his uh, constituents, I, I think it's, it's a right way to go. But there is, from, from, the, from the fact the public is out, there is no constitutional infraction. But Nigeria should dwell more on issues. They should be accountable to the people that elected them. It is not just enough to engage in legislative politics that we see on a daily basis. It does not profit the common man on the street. What is important to the good people of Vimo State is democratic governance. So, Mr. Mr. Ogun, Serious so what you're, what you're saying, Mr. Ogun, so what you're saying is that all this drama that is, you know, currently, you know, being played out in uh, Imo State is really very irrelevant, you know, with regards to the reason these persons have been elected in the State House of Assembly in the first place. This is really uh, personal politicking and not actual governance. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Um, what I'm asking is that you're saying that whatever is playing out in Imo State currently um, is personal politics and it's it's not actual the, the actual reasons that these persons have been elected to represent the persons of Imo State. Well, what I'm trying to say in simple terms is that looking at what the law says, section 92 or section 2C of the Constitution, the impeachment Given that we have about 19 lawmakers out of 27 that supported or vetoed to the, to the impeachment of the speaker, is constitutional. At least it meets the constitutional requirement. The constitution never made any additional requirement. The constitution only says, okay, we must have at least two thirds, majority of the other support the impeachment. So, from that angle, it is constitutional. At least it meets the requirement of the Constitution. But my own position remains that we should not just dwell 
on the politicking of you know members of the House of Assembly in the most states. These those ones are distractions. The period you've been you know removing, impeaching, suspension and the rest can be used to do something productive. Because when you look at the provision of section four of the constitution, you discover that the House of Assembly has a constitutional mandate to make laws for the good, order, and peace process of the state. Are they really doing that? It's a question that must be asked. Okay. Um, so, uh, can you also tell us if there are other factors to be considered before an impeachment process is taken? You know, um, the truth of the matter is that impeachment is more of a political question than a legal question. Well, I, I absolutely agree with them that the Constitution is equally not just uh, a legal document alone. It is a political document. As it stands, the Constitution only provides for the, for the requirements. The Constitution has never provided for ground reasons why a member, a, a, a speaker, or deputy speaker should be impeached or should be removed. The constitution never gets the ground because the constitution understands that it is usually a political question. What the constitution only requires is that it must be supported by the total majority of the members of the, of the House of Assembly. And in the emotive question, uh, at least from the fact and public domain, we have uh, about, about um, the requirements of the Constitution, which is the total majority. Uh, from my mathematical uh, knowledge, I think 19 out of uh, 27 meets the requirements of the total majority. So what happens to the fact well, that, uh, you know, uh, he's also mentioned, the impeached speaker is saying that the, the, they are not supposed to have a plenary. It was supposed to be a committee meeting. So it's a question of time as well. The time and the purpose of the gathering. Well, I would not, I would not want to join issues with uh, the pronouncement of the impeached speaker. What I can rely on as I speak to you are facts, public to me, what I read in the news. I do not have an inside uh, perspective or information. But what is important is that when the, the business of uh, the legislature is performed on the floor of the house, not in the hotel or not elsewhere, on the floor of the house, uh, I think uh, it, it, might be, it might be legal from the position of the law. Once it is on the, on the floor of the house, then it might be legal. All because right. what the law is, because I made it clear that it's more of a political question than a legal question. What the law simply is that it must be supported by some majority of the house. That does not necessarily mean that it can be done outside the floor of the house. We have a popular case of Ujo and Adeliki, uh, where an impeachment was carried out in an hotel in the battle. No, no, that will not be, that is not a contemplation of law. It must be carried out in the floor of the house. All right, Mr. Ogun. Because at the end of the day, what Nigerians will understand and that is why I'm emphasizing is that the own legislative politics is all about the affairs of the lawmaker, is all about the affairs of the political elite. 
How does it concern the common man? This is a question. Um, Mr. Ogun, Try to to answer. Mr. Ogun, I, th I think we would, we would have to take a pause here. Um, and of course, I think you've mentioned, you know, that the, the most important thing is, you know, how this affects the people of Imo State and the electorate. You know, the, their own personal politics and personal squabbles uh, should not, you know, be the most important thing um, at any point. Uh, but we would have to, of course, uh, do this uh, conversation some other time. Uh, we, of course, are out of time with it. Thank you very much, Professor Sogun, for your time and for joining us this morning. And uh, we'll move away from Imo State now. But still in the southeast, our conversation moves to Anambra State, uh, where we do a follow-up on the um, elections in Anambra. Of course, it starts at 10 a.m. Uh, this morning, supplementary elections from 10 a.m. to uh, 4 p.m., I um, mean, Ihiala local government area. We're going to be talking about the extra details surrounding this when we come back.